guy. It's uh, the Mr. Wasco. I'm sure there's other Mr. Wascos, but I'm the only one that matters. Sorry, Dad. This week, before we get started with, whoa, I want to read that. I thought I've had a lot of requests for uh, more video and pictures of my cat, Dr. Oscar Puss, since this is a series where I recommend books to both, you know, tweens and teachers. I thought it would be wildly appropriate to uh, show random footage of my grumpy and uh, curmudgeon -y cat. Meow! Oscar. Oh, oh poor you. <laughs> oh, poor cat. Oh. Isn't he adorable? He's not. Now this week for, whoa, I want to read that. I thought that maybe perhaps we could focus on books uh, that don't have a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, murder. Because I noticed, as I mean some uh, friends of mine and students of mine have noticed, that uh, a lot of the books that we've talked about have been about murder. And you know what? A rule in my class for writing, what's with all the dead characters? You don't have to murder everything. Chill out with the murder. Hashtag, I ain't about murder. So, therefore, I thought maybe I could recommend some books that, uh, you know, aren't all about people being murdered, families being murdered, kids murdering teens. So, let's see. I could recommend uh, uh, The Hunger, no. Um, ooh, what about Diverge? A lot of people dead in that one. Um, maybe, perhaps... Um, The maze room. My dead people here. Um, I'm just kidding. There's tons of books that don't rely on murder just for an interesting plot. That's what authors do. They think they're clever and they try to hook you in with something that's exciting and scary and then teach you things along the way. You don't have to do that. You don't have to necessarily read a story that's all about murdering people for it to be fun. An example of this would be Mail Malloy's the Apothecary. Full disclosure, I should probably just Google this on my laptop. Is it Mail Malloy? Maley Malloy? Maybe it's Miley. I hope it's not Miley. Anywho, Ms. Malloy wrote a book with one of my favorite words to say in the world. Apothecary. Apothecary? Apothecary! Apothecary! Amazing. Apothecary. I think before we even talk about the book Apothecary, we should probably know what that word means. Yes, it's fun to say. We should probably know what it means looking it up. So according to the dictionary, an apothecary is a profession for somebody within like a little village that would create medicines and uh, potions, you know, drugs that are good for you, helped you out in order to feel better. It's kind of like CVS before CVS was CVS. What does CVS stand for, by the way? Cold medicine, vitamins, seasonal gifts. Because what gift could say I love you more than that stupid $2 bear that has chocolates at CVS. You're welcome, Mom. So, in the apothecary, we meet two young kids. One of them's name is Janie. And Janie recently moved to England to escape 1950s America. Because to be fair, everyone wanted to escape 1950s America. It was what we called McCarthyism. It was a witch hunt. Americans were being blamed for being uh, communist, so that, you know, you, you, everyone's like, oh, it's him, not me, him, her, no, she's the one, not me. So they ran away and they fled to England, and they kind of set up shop. She's at a new school, and she spies this boy. Ooh. A boy, Benjamin, seems a little bit cooler and different than everybody else. And she's like, ooh, who's this guy? I want to know all about him. What's he doing after school? Hmm, do you want to go play paddle tennis? His dad is, get this, you ready for this? <gasps> An apothecary. Crazy, see how that happens? Full circle. So Janie and Benjamin find out, after their blooming friendship, that Benjamin's father could possibly be a spy. So many spoilers, I'm so sorry. So what do they do? Any good person does when they think that someone's a spy, you then spy on them. It's a double spying, hashtag double spy. They follow Benjamin's father until he's kidnapped. What apothecary now? Baby crowed? Baby crowed. And it's up to Janie and Benjamin to figure out where he had gone and stuff. Along the way, they meet Pip, 
uh, who's like a little little scoundrel, little little rapscallion, and they all kind of go on this adventure where they're they're taking potions and they're they're turning into birds and they're flying away and they're being chased by these enemies and they don't know who's after them and why and they have to find out what happened to the apothecary because if they don't have to know what happens to the apothecary they're not going to know what's going to happen to the world and the world, fate of the world might be at stake. Oh my god! If you're a big fan of fantasy, of romance, of 1950s anti-McCarthyism stories, who isn't, as well as just a fun adventure to read. I highly recommend The Apothecary by Mail Malloy, or Maley Malloy, or Miley Malloy. Feel free to comment on what her name actually is because I'm too lazy to reach for Google. It's over here. Move to me, laptop. I can't. You. I'm always going to you. You come to me. Let's just, you know, meet me halfway. Literally. Come on, man. Do everything for me. Pick up The Apothecary, as well as her sequel, the popular The Apprentices. Did I say that right? I always say that wrong. Apprentices? Apprent appren apprentices. Apprentices. Apprentices? Apprentices. Bad English teacher. If you know what's good for you, you will tell all of your friends and all of your enemies, even your frenemies, hashtag tell your frenemies, that, whoa, I want to read that. Because if you don't tell them, then bad things will happen to you. Like, you might fall in a hole and skin your knee, and then you have to crawl to get out. And there you might even see a worm or something, and you know what? Gross. Worms are disgusting. So if you don't tell your friends to subscribe to my channel and leave comments about how great it is, and then like it with the little thumbs up thing, you might meet some worms and skin your knee, and then you might have to go put like a band-aid on it, and it's not gonna feel good. It's gonna be right here, and you're gonna be like, ow, ew, ah, worms, ouch. Don't let that happen to you kids. Do something. You're on the internet. Cats on the internet do things that are cute, right? Make me money. Make me some of that internet money. Oscar! Are you tired? Of what? Sitting? What'd you do today? Nothing. Exactly. Oh, good thing you licked your leg. It was too dry, huh?